joined now by Cameron Bukhari. He's a senior fellow at the Center for Global Policy and a fellow with the Program on Extremism at George Washington University. Let's go back to the uh, Trump ban. Let's start there. Uh, two Republican senators, John McCain, Lindsey Graham, issued this joint statement, and I just lifted a little bit of it. We fear that this executive order will become a self-inflicted wound in the fight against terrorism, may do more to help terrorist recruitment than improve our security. You're a guy who follows this stuff. Are they on target? I, I think I agree with that uh, because you can't sort of quantify that, okay, these, these actions are producing X number of terrorists. I'll, I'll grant that. But this kind of rhetoric only empowers the narrative of ISIS. Uh, there is a lot of effort going on as part of the countering violent extremism effort globally to, to say that the West, the United States, is not at war with Islam and Muslims. If we sh the, to demonstrate that, we show that Muslims live here with all the freedoms, with all the respect, with all the privileges that you know other citizens enjoy. They can practice their faith. You have a ban like that, you basically undermine that argument that you know Muslims are not living in any fear here. They're not being persecuted. So ISIS comes back and it can it can just grab a hold of this and say, you know, told you so. Hmm. Uh, let me also talk a little bit about world reaction. We've touched on some of it. Uh, UK Foreign Secretary Boris Johnson called it divisive and wrong. Some of the reactions from the country's name, Iran says it's insulting. Yemen says it's simply not justified. But one of the most interesting uh, and most telling uh, comments from, came from the Interior Minister from Pakistan who said the worst sufferers of, sufferers of terrorism are Muslims. And uh, they, they have given the most sacrifices against the scourge. And I want to get your thoughts on that. Well. Numerically, yes, that is true, that uh, more Muslims have been killed by Islamist terrorists than anybody else. I mean, that's, that's factually correct. And for Pakistan, it's, it's even more because as many as 60,000 people have lost lives in the last decade. So yes, that, that's true. But, but at the end of the day, I think that, that we can come up with all sorts of arguments and, and, and counter arguments. Uh, but there is sort of this mutually reinforcing narrative here that this kind of ban empowers uh, you know, xenophobic sentiments. And you have incidents like the Quebec City uh, uh, mosque shooting. Uh, God forbid there could be more. You, you just mentioned that New York City is on alert. Mosques are being patrolled by, by police. Right now, the United States and, 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 and the law enforcement community is finding itself fighting Islamist extremists as well and, and essentially you know, anti-Muslim extremists as well. They're being sandwiched in between. Uh, th that was going to be my next question, because I just spoke to a Muslim here last week. That was her greatest fear, is, is, uh, is, is basically this phobia that, that's going to sweep across the country, that, that when the president takes these kinds of actions, it kind of gives license to perhaps citizens who might have the sim similar sentiments. In, indeed. And, and, and so it, it is one of those un unintended consequences of campaign promises. Uh, you know, you, you, in, during campaigns, it's well known. You know, you up your rhetoric, you try to maximize your vote base and maximize the number of people who are going to vote for you. But then there are costs. The cost is that you energize a certain base. Right now, the president is, is hardwired into this. He can't move out uh, because this, he's standing at very low approval ratings, under 40%. That's essentially his base. Now, if he were to maintain that, he has to show that he's delivering on his promises. How can you deliver on campaign rhetoric in the absolute sense? So you have to do something. One, one final question. How do you see this thing uh, working its way out? Obviously, there's been so much pushback. Uh, is it just something that fades away over a short period of time, the, the court challenges? I mean, where do you see this going? I think this is the new normal. I think that, that, that there will be a, a, a sort of crisis of governance that every time the president says something or issues an executive order or pushes a certain policy, he's going to f face pushback from society, from Congress, from the media, from overseas if it applies to foreign policy. And so I think this is the way this administration is going to play itself out, at least for the foreseeable future. Cameron Bukhari, thanks so much for your observations. Appreciate it.